Hello and welcome to Pay Dirt TV. I'm Dominic Piper. Today I'm joined by Mark English, Managing Director of New IPO, Oric Mining Limited. Mark, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Mark, there's a few IPOs coming about on the ASX at the minute. How did Oric come about? Uh, it came about by a combination of three people initially that had known each other for a long period of time. The geologist and I have been great friends for 15 years. The company secretary and the other executive director and I worked together for six years um, and we set ourselves the target of in incorporating and establishing a gold company with assets in West Australia. So you've got three assets uh, here in WA, uh, Spargerville, you've got some tenements up there, but then you've also got, I'm really interested to see, the Munda project in, in near uh, Wichimulta and also the Jeffreys Fine project around there. Can you tell us about each of them three projects? Yes, Munda is our key project and Munda is our, is our number one project. We acquired Munda from Estrella Resources in September this year. Um, when we bought Munda, it had a jork reserve resource on it for 46,000 ounces. We were aware that there was further drilling that had to be added into their um, data room. We went through that data, we've cleaned up their database. We now believe that we've got a jork compliant resource at Munda of 174,000 ounces. Munda is a strategically located at the top of the Widgee Maltha Dome. Um, we've got great tenant tenants to the west and the southwest being Neo Metals, and we've got the tenants to the right and the east being Mincor Resources. The Jeffreys Fine Tenement we acquired off, Gin, off Mincor Resources. Mincor Resources, um, Jeffreys Fine is discreet. It's out of the way. It's about 42 kilometres northeast of Norseman. It sits by itself at the bottom of the Fraser Range. Um, we acquired that tenement off Mincor. Mincor wanted to maintain an equity interest in the project, so we paid Mincor half in cash and half in shares in Oric. The other two tenements that we've got are at Spargerville. They're new granted exploration licences. One's still an application, one's recently granted. What excites us about Spargerville is all the um, ground to the south and to the immediate east is owned by Maximus Resources and they've got some really exciting things happening around near the Wattle Dam project and just across the highway is the Anglo-Australian Resources with their Mandilla Gold project. So we're in a fantastic location in West Australia, um, we're in the Blue Blood area of gold um, and we've got some really exciting opportunities. I think you're, you're right, uh, ex the opportunities for gold exploration in Western Australia at the moment are remarkable really, uh, juniors all over the state are, are making fantastic progress. Uh, what you need to, to make any progress yourself is some money and that's what an IPO brings you. How much are you raising and, and what do you plan to apply the funds to? Okay, so we're raising $6.5 million as our minimum subscription. We're entitled to takeovers up to $8 million. Most of that money, at least 70% of that money, is going to be spent on exploration and exploration-related activities. We'll be spending it diligently. We'll be spending it in the ground. Our goal is to spend 70% of our cash in mining and mining-related activities. One thing that COVID's taught us is you don't need a big office, you don't need a big corporate overhead, you don't need a big corporate footprint. So we're going to concentrate on, on mining and doing what we said we'd do. We've allocated about $1.5 million for exploration over the next two years at Munda. Munda is really exciting. Munda is right at the top of the Widgee Dome, as I mentioned. Um, it's got some fantastic drill results on it. We want to explore it. A lot of that area had only ever been explored for nickel. A lot of it's not been assayed for gold. So we are looking at really generating some fantastic results out of some gold exploration and drilling that we're planning. So can you dive straight into drilling then? Or do you need to, to do a bit of geophysics or geochemistry to plan your drill? Oh, oh, we've been doing that. We've been working on these projects now for about 10 to 11 months. Um, it's interesting to, or, or important to note that both Munda and Jeffries are on granted mining leases. They're all pre-native title. So we do have some work that we've got to do. So Mark, once you've got the money in the bank from the IPO, what's the plan? Do you plan to start drilling straight away? Uh, yes, we intend to have some drilling operations by the late January at Munda. 
Jeffrey's find is a different project. It's small, as I said, and discreet northeast of Norseman. We need to do some metallurgy work on that. We need to get a miscellaneous license application to get its 22 k's north of the highway. We see Jeffrey's as a really small deposit. It's not going to grow too much. It's about 46,000 ounces. We see it more as a toll treating operation. We've done some um, feasibility studies and some pit optimization studies as to how to deal with Jeffrey's find. Um, we believe that it, it, with the current gold price, that it's available to be carted all the way to Kalgoorlie if necessary. That's not our preferred option. We'd prefer to get into Coolgardie or... So Jeffrey's find is going to sit there. We're going to work away on that, but it's our goal to make sure we have that in production by 2022. Um, as I said at Spargoville, one of the um, exploration licences is granted, the other one's still an application. Um, we'll do some air core sampling in there. Um, as I said, it's quite, quite busy in that area, area of town. Um, but the other thing that we want to do is we want to keep on expanding our resource. We want to keep expanding our footprint at Widgie Mortha. We want to look at nickel players that are divesting gold assets, just like we did with both Estrella and Mincor. There are other people in that area that are looking at divesting gold assets. Um, we're, we're active in the area. We've allocated a million dollars out of our IPO for due diligence and M&A type activity. Um, and that's the other area where we believe we'll grow our ounces quickly. Uh, gold juniors have had a fantastic run this year on, on the ASX. Have you seen a lot of interest from the local retail market and, and indeed the institutional market? Uh, yes, look, we did a capital raising in September for our seed raising to, to acquire these projects. We were looking to raise $2.3 million at that stage. We got bid up to $3 million. Um, we scaled it back and we ended up taking $2.7 million. Um, our cash is principally coming out of Melbourne and Sydney. That's where our corporate advisors and brokers are. We do have some presence here in WA. Um, John Utley, who's the technical director, and myself, we're both from WA. So we've got quite a few people that are following us into the IPO. Um, and we're trying to raise between John and I and our friends and colleagues around $1 million of the 6.5. Very exciting to hear another, yet another gold IPO at the moment. When do you plan to list and, and when can investors expect to see some news flow out of the company? So we lodged our prospectus at the ASIC on the 17th of November. We cleared the exposure period. We've lodged our 1A application for the ASX. We've paid the fees. We're raising our capital now. We believe it will take a few weeks to get through the ASX because of the because of the bottleneck. So our aim is to list it around near the 11th or 12th of January next year. Mark, thanks very much for your time today. It's uh, an exciting IPO, one of many at the moment uh, in, in the gold space in WA. Uh, hopefully you have a lot of success and, and perhaps in the new year you can come back and join us and tell us about the success you've had at both uh, Manda, Munda and at Jeffrey's Fine. That would be fantastic. I'd appreciate that very much. Thank you. Pleasure.